whenever you starting to climb the ladder of prosperity of improvement financially anger lurks closely around it's waiting to tip toe into you and replace the holy spirit with itself be careful Good morning Trinity family members thank you for being part of our family uh, Sunday morning online service thank you so much for your financial support your tides your love offerings my heart cannot express with words our gratitude that you keep the fires of Trinity International burning you make it possible for me to be a voice for God to so many people your reward God doesn't neglect and he will duly and is duly your protection and your provider thank you don't forget a reminder that we want to have a christmas morning service at chatsworth uh, on christmas morning of course and we inviting our members from all over chatsworth um, our phoenix branch members as well and all over the durban area but for you that are watching online that cannot make it uh to be with us here for whatever reason we are still continuing with our online broadcast now do you know i've been preaching a message of generating peace in your heart because that emotion creates the vibration that is responsible for creating a toroidal moment uh, opening a vortex to the other realm what we call the kingdom of god so that god can be our provider for all things but we need to generate peace from within us and the question that many people ask pastor i don't know how to generate this feeling of peace within me well i'm going to give you that answer today and i want you to pay very careful attention i'm not going to wrap it up in anything fancy i'm going to give it to you straight so that you can start to practice what i'm sharing with you this morning beloved is important for you to know this you know when jesus came and he left us he wasn't planning to create followers he wasn't planning to create a christian movement of followers i believe he was creating little christs people who can shape their own stone people who are independent that can have a personal relationship with god on their own not depending on someone to lead them and so i continue that endeavor to give you the tools to shape yourself so that you can fit in that tower and as you absorb the tools that i'm giving you you prepare yourself for his coming you will be recognized as a stone that can fit into that tower so these tools that i'm giving you and equipping with you with is designed not to make you a follower but to make you lead lead especially your own lives lead yourself out of difficulty and this not many people can do because they are followers this morning i want to emphasize that so whatever tools i give you i cannot sharpen you i cannot shape you i can give you so that you shape yourself no man can shape another except if a man chooses to shape himself now 
before i get on to that teaching i want to you know i always want to bring you up to speed with the developments of what's happening in the world as related to scripture and i'm taking you to a scripture in isaiah 27 in that day the end of days that is now the lord would he serve severe sword great and strong will punish leviathan the fleeing serpent leviathan the twisted serpent and he will slay the reptile that is in the sea now there are several scriptures many of which are related to the end of days where leviathan is mentioned leviathan for easy understanding is a sea monster a um a sea hunter that devours anything in its path that can destroy it's a powerful chaos destructive monster that is in the sea and we heard and we hear many stories of leviathan in mythology but i want to show you how it relates to today which is the end of days now many people when they when they hear of leviathan you know especially people who are not christian and many who are they actually think there's going to be a monster coming out of the sea and that monster is going to portray leviathan uh, but i want to take you closer to you see when the bible talks of 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 uh, the beast and all these it's using imagery um it one you know the bible is not intended to be literal in many aspects so we got to know the difference between something that we have to look forward to literally and something that is uh, symbolic and so this scripture is symbolic where god talks about a sea monster having that at the back of your mind i want you to look at this article um it's a breakingdefense.com article it says all domain land warfare networks and digital warfare here are the army's new planned ew signals program ew stands for electronic warfare Brigadier General Ed Barker gave reporters a look ahead on his fiscal 20 2024, 25 and 26 priorities. This is the general in the United States Army instructed by the Pentagon and you know they involved in DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects um the organization within Pentagon and they have prioritized something beginning in 2024 which involves electronic warfare now the article continues the army is making progress on several programs on the electronic warfare intelligence and sensors front and the official in charge of making those efforts a success is gearing up for some new starts over the next fiscal year this was december last year now this article electronic warfare planning and management tool a full deployment for electronic warfare a tool com- used by commanders to visual and control the electromagnetic spectrum is planned for early fiscal year 2024 and the army is already looking at modernizing the software for the effort Now now this this program of electronic warfare guess what it's called it's called project leviathan now project leviathan is a project of the pentagon and it's partnered pentagon is partnered with google bill gates microsoft Amazon, IBM, 
Lockheed Martin, the defense contractor, among others. So these private organizations funds and invests in DAPA, the Pentagon's project on warfare. Now, they decided, let's call this program Project Leviathan. Now, I want you to, you know, some time back, I spoke to you about a company, an Israeli company. Let, let, me, let me do this. An Israeli company, because we know there's Edomites living there. Uh, they, they got this project called NVIDIA, or this company. And first, before we say anything else about NVIDIA, if you look at the logo, the logo is that of an eye. As you learned last week, the eye represents the power of Satan over this world, watching it so that he can make this world real for us in our minds. So his power is symbolized by the eye, watching, making things real for us. So NVIDIA has this logo. Now I already showed you NVIDIA means envy. Now NVIDIA is a program or a company that owns a ship that sails freely around the world on the seas. They have no port. They just in the sea. But more interesting than that, it's an unmanned sailing vessel called a USV. That's how it's abbreviated. Unmanned meaning it's controlled by artificial intelligence. So a computer program created by NVIDIA is on a ship sailing freely around the world doing its own thing autonomously and getting instructions to do a certain thing. And it leads them to, to create or adopt electronic warfare using Project Leviathan on the sea. They are not beholden to any country because it's open waters, open sea. But we know they are controlled by the Edomites. And so they can conduct electronic warfare from the sea and they can use light because information frequency is all light using light waves to burn up cell phones explode batteries interfere with television signals in fact this war that's happening right now uh, let me say this, this war that's happening right now between the Edomites and Leb in Lebanon. Last week we spoke about how uh, pages have exploded, how walkie-talkies have exploded, cell phones. In fact, there was one of the leaders of the opposition that was based in Iran a month ago. His cell phone exploded by his head while he was sitting in Iran sleeping at night. That exploded cell phone caused the man to die. Apparently, they, well, the media, you can trust them, really you can trust them. They said it's some kind of rocket that came and exploded, pinpoint the man's bed. His, everybody else in the family was living. But the rocket only hit him on the bed. And we, we're supposed to swallow that. But the son said that the cell phone exploded. And he died. So there seems to be, in fact, this last week, the Edomites broke into the radio and television stations, hijacked, hacked into, to broadcast to the Lebanese people that they're coming in to attack and they need to flee. So, this NVIDIA, Project Leviathan, is sitting on the seas 
and it's wreaking havoc using light waves to conduct electronic warfare. And the project was to be tested in 2024 according to the 2023 article we just read. Now, Wikipedia tells us this. Sea Hunter is an autonomous unmanned surface vehicle. That's USV. You can imagine the power of the sea monster. Project Leviathan that God mentioned in even Isaiah leading up to the sea monster we see in the book of Revelation. This sea monster is so powerful that it can slay a person when he's not even near that person. They can, it can kill remotely. Such is its power. Now everything that is electronic, a signal can be sent to it through the sea hunter to administer control over any item that is electronically, electromagnetically connected. And this product which it can connect with is cell phones, anything, radio, television, walkie-talkies. But I don't want you to neglect this because this is its primary goal, to connect with human beings. But you have to have something electronic planted in you for the connection to happen. For the sea monster, this leviathan, to have reached into you, directly into your mind. So that it can plant thoughts in your mind. It can create you to take certain actions. To behave in a certain way. And one of the ways in which they've done that already in millions of people around the world is to plant this nano bots inside of you through the, the disease that happened in the last few years. The consequences of which is being neglected. Nobody is mentioning how bad this was. In fact, they are propagating even more, especially for Africa now. And another one will be out soon. So, all this control over humanity will be administered by Leviathan, this powerful sea monster. In fact, in the end of days, those who will not have connection to this sea monster will be regarded as an enemy. A very few number of people who will be pure bloods. I want you to just watch this little video clip to give you a little bit more insight. Just watch together with me. Transvestites, they're mm -hmm. transitioning from one thing to another. We're transhumanized. They're transitioning the human race to another, another species, okay? And uh, it won't be long. It'll be in the 2020s, Doc. If you survive, if you survive to 2030 without any of these uh, genetic therapies injected into you, these uh, biological operating systems, if you can survive to the 2030s and not become a human antenna, it's not just going to be one thing. It's going to be multiple things that they're going to try to get into our bodies. Right. If you can survive to the 2030s as a pure human being, you're going to be in a small minority of resistors. Of course, they'll call you terrorists, insurrectionists. Enemy. Enemies, infidels. But you will be the remaining pure bloods be the remaining human purebloods on the planet. Satan is eliminating God's creation. That's why, he's, that's why the time until Jesus Christ comes back, I believe it's very short. Nothing like this has ever happened, Doc. Nothing. It's never happened like this on this scale. 
We don't know, we don't know what kind of technology that they had before the great flood. But the Bible says that Noah was, was pure in his generation. Yes. Does that mean he was, he and his family were the last pure bloods left on the planet? And that's what the Bible says. So. But the Nephilim were here. And the Nephilim are still here. And they're busy. And they're directing these scientists and engineers. Uh, and they are now transitioning the human race into another species, which is being merged with technology. Synthetic biology. Start, study that. Study. Just go online and study synthetic biology. It will shock you to find out what advances in synthetic biology they've already made. One of the other interesting aspects of this particular article, though, is how 6G is going to operate in a whole new environment. It's not going to be operating like 5G is now, uh, basically radio waves and wires. Mm -hmm. It's going to operate in light. It's yes. going to be transmitted through light. Uh, you know, Lucifer, he's an angel of light, and so, um, you know, and we're talking 6G. I, I just think it's interesting that, you know, even in our own studio here, you know, LED lights, they're pervasive. I mean, mm -hmm. Every light you own nowadays right. uh, is an LED light. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that it turns on and off a million times a second, but they can now use light mm -hmm. to transfer information. Mm -hmm. And... And so that's one of the words that we've come across at these tech conferences is the word ubiquitous. In other words, it's everywhere, everywhere you look. Now, what's more ubiquitous than light? Satan, Satan wants to be able to say he is the light of the world. I guess what it comes down to. Right. He, he duplicates through technology everything that God is through his being. And Satan wants to be able to say that he, Satan, is the light of the world. Yes. And that's where he's moving. So uh, we'll watch this uh, advancement in technology. Um, look, God could set it back. He could, he, could, he could mess up their technology, mess up their plans. We don't know. But if we continue on the path that we're on, there's not going to be a lot of pure blood humans left on the planet in the 2030s. Now I want you to see the relevance. Job chapter 41, 18 says this. His sneezings flash forth light. This is describing Leviathan. And his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. In other words, a new day is dawning for a new type of warfare. Where light is being used for control and destruction. This demon is slowly going to usurp humanity's power and autonomously control this illusion of a world. This thing will have so much of power in a short while that people will start to fear it. And Revelation says that they will be in awe of this thing and they will bow their knees. Only those with the mark of God will not do so. In other words, they won't experience his, the sea monster's rot because they're not connected. And that's why it's so important to be careful. Listen, there's no way that you're going to avoid any of these nano things that are coming into your body. But there's one thing we have is the blood of Jesus. That's why your relationship with God has to take priority over every other thing that you have in your life. If that doesn't take precedence, your relationship personally with God, then this thing will be able to plant whatever inside of you and your salvation will be at risk. Let me show you what kind of things are planted in things that you don't suspect. 
I already shared some of this with you, but let's take a look. A medical article tells us this. Fluorescent nanoparticles present in Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola, physiochemical properties, cytotoxicity, biodistribution and digestion studies. Foodborne nanoparticles, NPs, have drawn great attention due to human health concerns. This study reports the detection of the presence of fluorescent NPs about 5 nanometers in two of the most popular beverages, Coca-Cola Coke and Pepsi-Cola Pepsi. Now, it will interest you to note, I'm not going to read the article in completion because I think you get the message. But the headline tells us the Coca-Cola company TechnoServe and the Gates Foundation partner to boost income of 50K small-scale farmers in East Africa, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. These people have partnered with the company that most people drink in the world, their drinks. And they're now using the plants that are harvested to go into the Coca-Cola products. Those plants are genetically grown, modified, so that these nanoparticles can be present. So when these har farmers harvest them, the nanos are already present. And when they go into the product, you're going to drink it. And this is why, if you drink anything deadly, any poison, it will not harm you. Mark 16, Jesus promises. Listen, I want to take you now to give you an expansion on the teaching that we, we learned from the shepherd of Hermas. So I'm going to take that reading for you, but in this vision that uh, Hermas had, Jesus appeared to him and he started to have a conversation with the Lord. And I'm going to take you into that conversation and I'm going to see the Lord's words play out and then I'm going to help you to understand the significance of these words in building your character, in shaping your stone. Here's Jesus speaking. Be patient and understanding, he said. And you will overcome all evil deeds and will accomplish all righteousness. For if you are patient, the Holy Spirit that lives in you will be pure. Wait, wait, wait. Let's just stop there for a moment. If you are patient, the spirit of God that's living in you will be kept pure. Let's understand that for a moment. Patience is equal to purity. Uncontaminated by some other evil spirit. Living in a spacious room, it will rejoice and be glad with the vessel in which it lives and will serve God with much cheerfulness for it is at peace with itself. Now wait, wait. Here's a clue. You know I asked you and you asked me how do I generate peace inside of me? I want you to look at that first paragraph the clue is there. The clue to creating peace within you. I want you to write this down. And I want you never to forget it. Pastor, how do I create peace within me? The first thing you have to do to create peace within you. Is to leave the Holy Spirit in an empty room. So that he has space. Not associated with another evil thing that comes in. And this clean room that the Spirit of God lives in. It wants you to have patience. So patience is a precursor for you to generate peace in your vibrational pattern. 
write it down it's simple but it's understandable and now let's get into it the next paragraph says but if an angry temper approaches immediately listen to this the holy spirit which is very sensitive is distressed because it does not have a clean place that room is not clean where it's coming into and it seeks to leave the place for it is choked by the evil spirit and does not have the room to serve the lord the way it wants to because it is polluted by the angry temper so what is the angry temper the angry temper is an evil spirit that comes into a person and the holy spirit that you supposedly supposed to have becomes uncomfortable and it leaves it seeks to leave the person don't take this lightly because in many of my experiences one of the ways in which an evil spirit takes root in a person is because a person generated angry temper and once an evil spirit enters any chance of a holy spirit coming in i should say the holy spirit coming in is zero now let's read the next line for the lord lives in patience but the devil li- lives in an angry temper that's where the devil lives so if both spirits live together it is unfortunate and evil for that person in whom they live for if you take a little wormwood and pour it into a jar of honey all the honey is spoiled is it not such a large amount of honey spoiled by such a small amount of wormwood it spoils the sweetness and the owner no longer cares for it because it has become bitter and lost its usefulness but if the wormwood is not put in the honey the honey turns out to be sweet and it is useful to the owner you see then that patience is very sweet even more so than honey and is useful to the lord and he lives in it so the opposite of an angry temper is patience but an angry temper is bitter and useless so if an angry temper is mixed with patience the patience is polluted and its intercession is no longer useful to god now wait a minute what is god saying here god is saying when you're an angry person the spirit of god cannot live in that vessel it will leave you and therefore your prayer won't be heard is not useful to god he can't hear your prayer anymore because it's a polluted being praying that's why you won't feel god you won't sense god you won't be able to uh, 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 call out to him and, and and have his warm hands over you because of temper now temper is not ranting and raving all the time temper is subtle at times it's a inner hatred it's a deep seated anger it's tangible you can literally feel the anger of a person even when the person doesn't act out violently or shout violently the person who is carrying anger is a person that can demonstrate that anger by being by crying by being quiet by rebelling by engaging in um promiscuous activity by having alcohol by taking drugs so so the acting out of an angry temper is not necessarily acting out violently physically no no shouting because when you think of an angry temper 
you think of someone very violent you think of somebody that is shouting but that's not always so an angry temper is someone that harbors it most of the time deep inside and once you harbor these feelings inside let me tell you this the spirit of anger comes to take root and this is why the holy spirit wrote through the prophets in the bible that you must never go to bed angry don't let the sun set on your anger because if you let your angry emotion linger now initially when you get angry it's you getting angry reacting to whatever disappointment reacting to not being validated reacting to getting hurt you get angry you bottle it this is you this is what you do when you when something happens but once you express those feelings the spirit of anger an evil spirit comes and feels and invite because you now vibrating at that frequency that invites the spirit of anger in once the spirit of anger comes in it will turn your life upside down you will start to see the fruit of that anger in how people misbehave how they reject authority how they hate people how they cry how they take drugs how they drink alcohol you'll see it manifest and this is the reason why most people don't know that they are carrying an angry spirit because an angry spirit is generally seen as violent shouting so they don't see their silence their inner rebellion as anger no but you don't know that there's a an angry spirit that has made residence in you be careful you know many years ago i shared you the experience that i had when i went to a man's house to remove a spirit from him when he was jumping on the bed and no other pastors could take it out and when i walked into that room i shared with you that it was quite a funny experience if you think back on it not at the moment or not at that moment rather when i walked in i saw this violent looking man violent very violent face angry and when he looked at me he was actually catching the other pastor and lifting him up on the wardrobe and the man was hanging by his feet that's how powerful this demon was in this man and uh, when he looked at me he left the man down and uh, he acknowledged who i was and then fear came upon him but when i questioned the spirit before it left the body you know what he told me he told me that when this little boy was 3 months old his father held him in his hands and was deciding to throw this baby into the bay why because his wife had had a relationship with another man and the child was the other man's child so the father was not actually carrying his own baby he was carrying the child of another person and so this baby because it was neglected uh it can't have any emotion because it doesn't know anything but the spirit from the sea a spirit of anger came and it occupied this man's heart and that same spirit was living with this man some 30 some odd years up to that point and his whole life was being destroyed piece by piece until i removed that spirit but you see that spirit doesn't just leave no no it hovers it looks it searches and it waits now when we opened this ministry this man was grateful that i delivered him from such a foul spirit but as the months went on and he sat in the congregation little did i realize this man saw himself as some kind of a pastor and so he sat on the left hand side of me in the second row i remember that very clearly like it was yesterday but it was over 25 years ago now close to that and 
while I'm ministering the word of the Lord, while I'm preaching, my eyes caught a glimpse of him. There was no reaction. Nothing was said by him. He was sitting like an ordinary person, but I, I felt, it's like, it's like you can feel the anger of a person even when they don't express it. And I felt this anger, and it wasn't just anger, it was anger towards me. And I couldn't understand it. He never said anything, he never did anything, I just felt it. And not long after that, he became rebellious in doctrinal ways. We need to do a baptism this way, he recommended, not the way you do it. You know, there was just a rebellion in him. And uh, shortly after that, he just up and he left the ministry to open his own church. But what he didn't realize is, and many people with anger don't realize it, that, that you see, he got angry that he wants to be somebody and he's delayed so long and because he's not patient, that anger comes in and he takes charge of him. That spirit returned. And so he, in rebellion, he went and he ordained himself as a pastor. And he opened a ministry. For years it was going on until one day, his, his, uh, his congregant member stood up to say that he had had an affair with her in the middle of the congregation. And that crushed the church. I don't know where he is and what's going on right now. I'm not really following that. It just came to my ears uh, about a few years back. But the point is, is that this is a destructive spirit. You cannot, you cannot let anger. Even you know, sometimes when you, in a, in, in a crowd of people, family members, friends, when somebody has a, an anger inside of you, you can feel it. It's tense. Even though they don't say or act out or shout, but you can, you can sense it. It's present in homes, between husbands and wives, between children and parents. But you don't see it in any other way. You don't see it as anger. You see it as this is a problem child. You see it as, as my child is an introvert. You see it as my child is going out of control. You see it as my, my wife. My wife is not happy. You see it as she, she decided to leave our marriage and, and go somewhere else to find another person. Let me give you this scenario. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I think it'll work. If I share with you now. Now imagine a home, a nice, good home. You have a seven-year-old child, Emma. And mistakenly, she drops and spills her cereal on the floor. Lots of milk. And the dad comes in. And he sees this. Inside of him. It's work for him to do now. So, he gets angry. And he starts shouting at little Emma. Now listen, it's not that Emma did it purposely. It was a mistake. It was an accident. Maybe she was careless. But it was an accident. But here comes dad. Screaming and shouting at the child. And mom tries to step in. And say, listen, let's just get together. We can wipe it up. But no, dad is insistent. No, Emma's done that. She needs to learn. She needs to clean. The voice, the tone, the anger is palpable. Now what happens? This, there's, there's tension in that family. For stupid things. The tension is against the child. The tension is against the wife for trying to belittle his point of view. You don't tell me that we must do this. You don't make me feel small that I'm doing something wrong. So inside of him that anger is building. Inside of the wife, she feels the man is not validating her for her input. For what she has to say. For what she thinks they, sh they should do. And that lack of validation in this poor woman, it builds up 
her own sense of anger against the man. And that little child, her heart is hurt. She feels unloved. She doesn't know that the love for a parent for the child, it, it, it has, it, 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 there is no end to it. It is unconditional that when you, when you love your child, it doesn't matter what they do or who they are, you still love them. There's no condition for that love. It's a similar kind of love that Jesus has for us. That sometimes we don't feel when things don't go our way. So the parent, the child has no idea that the dad loves her. But his reaction to her tells her something different. And she feels a sense of anger in the form of depression. And she cries and she sits in her room. This man with his anger kicked off a rolling stone that is going to go so much downhill from there on. And it gets worse because there's no apology for his reaction. He feels he was right. All angry people feel they were right. It doesn't matter. Even if you are right, patience will get you better results for the health and well-being of your entire home. Patience. There are times when you can burst out. But you need to rein yourself back. It's human to get angry. But when you let it fester, in other words, you carry it inside. You don't, you see the, the wife and the, and the child, they both carrying a form of anger because that's what the man transferred. Energy of anger is now transferred into two beings. This man can calm himself down and pretend nothing happened. And because that's his nature, he'll do it again in a different way and pretend nothing happened. So he can cause damage to the other two parties in that house without realizing he was the driving force behind her failures, behind her depression and your child's misbehavior. And as time goes on, when the child is a teenager and the child starts acting out, and starts hanging on with the hanging out with the wrong company, and the wife starts to neglect this man. He doesn't see it as his fault because he generated that anger. That's a root. It took root. I want you to think about that for a moment. If this man at that moment just had patience, oh, it's just work, man. Let's just wipe it out. It'll take me five. I'll be five minutes late to work. So what? Patience. If I lose a client because I want to, I'm more interested in the health of my family. So what? Money is nothing compared to the well-being of the future of your child and the love and respect for your wife. It's not comparable. That's why you cannot have a lack of patience because anger starts to come in. But worse than that, if that anger festers overnight, a demonic spirit of anger will align itself. Once it comes in, even if you had the Holy Spirit, that spirit of God will seek to leave. That's when all your prayers doesn't go up. All your effort to serve God is vanity because what you have inside, you have an unclean spirit. You have a spirit of bitterness. You have a spirit of unforgiveness. You have a spirit of hatred for the person. And that, that is the fruit. That's the fruit of angry people. Let's just read to confirm everything we just said. Now here he said, how an angry temper works, how evil it is and how it subverts, subverts God's servants by its working and how it leads them astray from righteousness. But it does not lead astray those who are filled with faith, nor can it work on them because the Lord's power is with them. <clears throat> but it can lead astray those who are empty-headed and double-minded. For whenever it sees such people prospering, oh, listen to this, 
Whenever you try to climb up in life, to progress, anger awaits nearby. Listen to this very carefully. Whenever you're starting to climb the ladder of prosperity, of improvement, financially, anger lurks closely around. It's waiting to tip toe into you and replace the Holy Spirit with itself. Be careful. It insinuates itself into the person's heart. Whenever it sees such people prospering, it insinuates itself into the person's heart and for no reason at all, the man or the woman is embittered over worldly concerns, either about food or something trivial, something small, like the spilling of the milk, man. You get bitter about some friend, about giving something or receiving something, or foolish matters such as these. Listen, these are Jesus' words, man. For these things are foolish and empty and senseless, and inexpedient for God's servants. But patience is great and strong and possesses a mighty and vigorous power and prosperous, prospers in a spacious area. It is joyful, exultant, free from care. You spilt the milk, who cares? You made a mistake, who cares? You did something wrong, who cares? You blocked me from going somewhere and you blocked my progress. Who cares? That's when joy comes in. Glorifying the Lord at all times. Lord, if it happened, it's your will. If it didn't happen, it's your will. I am just content. I have patience. I'll go where you want me to go when you are ready to send me. I'll be where I'm supposed to be when you are ready for me to be there. Just a feeling of contentment and patience. Oh, I hope you're getting this. Patience and contentment with whatever good happens, with whatever bad happens. If you're patient and if you're content, that generates peace. I hope you're understanding. Because a double-minded person won't have confidence in God that what happened is okay. God is in control of this thing. No. A double-minded person will start to worry and fear and angry and anger and that spirit starts to come in. Let's continue. Having no bitterness in itself, always remaining gentle and quiet. For when all these spirits live in one vessel, where the Holy Spirit also lives, the vessel cannot contain them, but overflows. So the sensitive spirit, the Holy Spirit that is, which is used to living neither with an evil spirit nor with harshness, departs from the person such as this and seeks to live with gentleness and quiet. Then, when it has left the one who, in whom it lives, the person is emptied of the spirit of righteousness and from then on, since he, ha he or she is filled with the evil spirits, that one is unstable in everything he or she does and is dragged about here and there by the evil spirits, totally blind with respect to good intentions. So it goes therefore with all those who are ill-tempered, have nothing to do Therefore, with an angry temper. The most evil, that's why I'm speaking about it. It's, Jesus says, it's the most evil spirit. Instead, put on patience and resist an angry temper and bitterness. And you will be found in the company of holiness that is loved by the Lord. So take care that you never neglect this commandment. For if you master it, you will also be able to keep the rest of the commandments that I'm about to give you. Be strong in them and empowered indeed. Let all who want to walk in them be empowered. So this 
is your assignment for this week to generate peace i want you to practice patience in all your works from the moment you wake up from this chair this morning patience i am content i am going to be patient if something happens don't worry everything is fine well let's look at the, the little things that generate all these things in a home a missing tv remote father starts to jump up and down swearing and blaming the person you know when i come home i want to have my dinner where do you leave it you clean and you just put it anywhere anger oh lord you don't see that the little thing leads to the big thing you don't see it i'm not an angry person you don't know by nature it's already embedded in your dna it's living there and when the outside spirit sees my friend is living there anger i'm coming the food is late you know you got the whole day what you do you, when i'm coming home i want it it's food it's late shouting is not going to rush it the pot has to be on the stove it has to cook shouting is just going to make the person who's providing it for you with love and care you're going to make them bitter towards you and it builds and it builds and one day you're going to see the result of that anger inside of them you transferring anger you are a worker of satan you doing his bidding your anger is creating anger because that's what a seed does when you plant seed of anger you're going to see fruit of anger not just in you in everybody around you that chooses to be with you that's why god says don't be closely associated with a angry person and sometimes you can sense an angry person as i said they're not going to be outbursting everywhere that's not you see it inside the depression you see it inside their bitterness you see it in all these things that's the fruit they show think of the little things you get angry about the clothes lying on the floor every day i have to tell them to pick this clothes up every day this makes a child feel un, unimportant you can do things for your neighbor bake a cake and give them take all the time for their birthday my cousin's birthday you waited in the kitchen you went from hand to but for me i just leave the sock just for you to pick it up i i'm not perfect mom but i can see that you got anger against me and 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 this little things just just add up and they grow and they it's small things that's what jesus said little things trivial things things that are not important they will build momentum and they bury itself in your dna husband spend too much time with his father and mother at their house he they don't want to he doesn't want to spend time with his children he spends it. you see that that resentment that anger it builds people these little things and the home becomes a very unpleasant environment not just for you but for everybody that lives there because it generates a vibration of no patience no peace so i want you my people that are following me these are nuggets of gold i'm giving you to create an atmosphere of patience in your house so that peace radiates through the walls listen to this next time next line righteousness and unrighteousness now here he said about faith there are two angels with a person one of righteousness and one of wickedness so how sir i said will i recognize their workings given that both angels live with me listen he said and you will understand them the angel of righteousness is sensitive and modest and gentle and tranquil when this one enters your heart immediately he talks with you about righteousness about purity about holiness about contentment about every righteous deed and about every glorious virtue whenever all these things enter your heart you know that the angel of righteousness is with you now observe the works of the angel of wickedness first of all he is ill tempered and bitter and senseless and his works are evil tearing down god's servants so whenever he this one enters your heart recognize him by the works but i do not know sir i said how do i recognize him listen he said when some angry temperament outburst 
or bitterness comes over you, recognize that he is in you. Then comes the desire for much business to deflect attention from your current status. You'll seek much business. You want to dive into something unrelated to what you're going through. Extravagant kinds of food and drink, that's a comfort thing. Much drunkenness to take your mind off of what's happening. Various kinds of unnecessary luxuries and the desire for women and greed and angry and arrogance and pretentiousness. You pretend to be something that you are not. Put on a front. And whatever else resembles or is similar to these things. So whenever these things enter your heart, you know that the angel of wickedness is with you. Wow. I want you to look at yourself as a tree. The seed of anger gets planted first before the tree even is birthed. It's in the soil. It plants itself in our DNA. That's the soil. It germinates because of emotional outbursts and responses. Triggers. When your emotions get triggered. Then it produces roots of bitterness. Frustration. Resentment. Those are the roots. And then it produces fruit. And the fruit you can see. Drunkenness. You can see unfaithfulness. You can see greed. You can see pursuit of material things. These are signs that the spirit of darkness is in you. You are hiding a, your, this facade. You, you, you are creating this facade about you. That's why we, we, we see that there's pretentiousness. You, to outside you want to make it look like there's nothing wrong because I'm pursuing this. I gained that. I got this. But deep inside, seated in you, is this wickedness. See, when you start to show this temper, the fruit of bitterness, people can sense it for a mile away, except the person who is having the feeling. You become deceptive. You masquerade. Those are the fruits. You masquerade in righteousness. You know, this is how God wants it to be. And this is how we must be in this home. Anger and God don't go in the same sense. They don't live in the same house. You have to be patient with people. You have to be patient with circumstance. You have to be content with as things are. You cannot control other people's behaviors with your attitude. You just make it worse. But that's the fruit you see of somebody who puts on a front, but the anger lives inside. So angry people will always feel they're right. Hmm. Their behavior distances themselves from everybody emotionally. It erodes relationships. It breaks down love relationships. This outburst makes them feel a false sense of control over the circumstances. They, as long as they feel important by these outbursts, it doesn't matter how anybody else feels. I want to be right, I'm right. These outbursts validate their importance, their significance in that place, wherever they want to outburst. So, you can see the stepping stone for Satan, the angry spirit to enter a person, is when an emotional anger starts to take root in your character. Especially, now I know spirit things in the spirit world more than most. And one of the things I can tell you, if you sleep angry, now this doesn't have to be, as I said, angry in the sense of anger, like how we see it. It can be the resultant force of anger, like bitterness, like hatred, like unforgiveness, like, um, like depression. The hidden, the, the root of that is all anger. And, and, and when you sleep with it overnight, you're giving the devil an open door to enter your body. That's why Ephesians tell us, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place of the devil. Other scriptures say, don't give a foothold to the devil. So in order for us to create the right reality for us, we have to resonate at the frequency of peace. 
that peace is generated when we start to have patience and when we just content with how things are no matter how bad and then you start to create a new reality whatever god has planned for you that peace will start to generate that new reality it takes time you have to be patient one of the fruit of the tree of god is patience then you will know the holy spirit really lives in there let me show you more practically the lord has actually created an instrument in you that can actually generate this peace and as long as you have patience and you have contentment even your water quality that's inside your body is used to generate an opening of the vortex let's watch this little clip it might be helpful quantum jumping does not mean jumping out of your body and randomly waking up in another world on another planet you are staying right where you are in your body on this planet it is the world around you that changes with you look at it like this the wealthy and the poor are living in the same society on the same planet and still they are experiencing two completely different worlds at the same time these different worlds are one existing at the same time there are multiple realities available to you at all times everything is energy everything vibrates you are not able to see those frequencies but your mind has the ability to pick up on those frequencies that is why you can think of your desired reality it is already existing in another dimension these dimensions are coexisting at the same time the reality you can physically see and experience is the one that aligns with your vibration everything is coexisting at the same time the past the present the future and different types of realities in the quantum field think of it like this if you switch on your tv you can only watch one channel at a time but that does not mean only this one channel is streaming right now there is a show streaming on every channel at the same time it's the same with the realities that are available to you think of your vibration as a remote that determines which reality you see right now at this moment in order to quantum jump into your desired reality your vibration has to align with the frequency of your desired reality in order to do that you have to change the paradigm in your subconscious mind which controls your vibration not only that it controls 90% of your life your actions your habits your feelings and your thoughts the other's key is your self concept self image change the subconscious programming shift your identity by changing your self concept self image so that it aligns with your desire visualize control your mental and emotional state doing these things will change your vibration and when that is done you will quantum jump into your desired reality that means you will attract conditions and circumstances that will bring about everything you want your life changes your reality shifts let us do this this week this week i want you to concentrate i want you to do the fast but but listen as i said before don't worry about the food part i want you to specifically concentrate on that your outbursts your feelings and as soon as it's starting to pluck at you and as soon as you start to lose control of that emotion i want you to remind yourself oh i'm fasting i cannot lose control of my emotion i'm going to have patience about this patience with the person patience with my situation i'm just going to be content this is how things are so let it be that counter intuitively will cause a turn around of events that will create a new reality for you through the unified field and the kingdom of god so when you're going through something when you have an emotion and you want to react with that emotion rein it in 
This is under your control. And even if spirits have been influencing you, if you can control that and create peace instead, the Holy Spirit will want to be in that place where you are and will invite itself into you if you call on him. And that will be a changing moment for your family. The best way to end something is to starve it. No reaction, just don't feed it. That's where the true power lies. Where attention goes, energy flows. And when energetic patterns are broken, new worlds emerge. Don't return negative energy. Remove yourself and create a new algorithm. Don't be afraid to call your person you've been angry with and hurting and abusing with your words and emotions, whether it be your wife or your children or your husband or friends. Say, I'm, I'm sorry for being angry because that anger is not just hurting me, but it's putting bitterness in you and it's creating a home that is going downhill and things, demons are just playing with us now. So I'm just going to be peaceful. I'm very sorry. And I want you to, as you, as you shape your stone, let me tell you, some of you will be ready by the end of this week to fit inside there. There's a new generation of little Christs that are being formed. And I thank you for being part of that family. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us an opportunity to be a part of an eternal family that Lord you've counted my name I feel honored that out of the billions of people on this planet I feel honored that you chose me father and you chose those people that are listening to me that have your heart that are willing to make sacrifices that will shape them to create a beautiful home for themselves and an atmosphere of love tolerance, patience. Cover them all with your blood, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, beloved. God bless you. Please share these messages with someone you love. In the name of Jesus Christ, I greet you. Have a beautiful week.